What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be going over and testing this lithium iron phosphate battery I got on Amazon. This is a 12 volt, 100 amp hours, just over one kilowatt hour capacity. The reason I wanna review this battery is because of how cheap it was. At the time of purchase, it was $170. I was just browsing Amazon, literally just looking at random stuff. I was bored at work and I couldn't help myself. And I saw this and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna buy that, give it a shot, see if it's any good and let you guys know what I think about it. I have some upcoming projects involving solar and I need some more 12 volt batteries in order to do that. I wanna make a budget 12 volt system, show you guys how to build one of those. And I think this would be perfect to do it. If you go on Amazon right now and try to find this at 170 bucks, I don't think you'll be able to get it only because Amazon's prices fluctuate so much. And the more people that buy these, the quicker the price is gonna go up. So I will include a link to this battery in the description just in case you wanna go check it out for yourself. Without further ado, we're gonna do some testing and yeah, we're gonna see how good this is and if it's crap or if it's good. Okay, in the box, you get the owner's manual, which is actually pretty interesting. It goes over a bunch of random stuff, like history of the company, all their certifications that they allegedly have, um, their chart about their other products that they sell. So it looks like a pretty legit company. I mean, this is better than some manuals I've seen. They say it's good for 4,000 cycles, grade A lithium battery. Interesting. It says it'll do 15,000 times at 60% death of discharge. So that's pretty interesting. Yeah, anyways, interesting. It also came with two extra sets of terminal bolts. It's already got terminal bolts in it, but I guess it gave you an extra. And then also a quality control little thing saying it passed a quality control test. So we're gonna be the final say on that. Let's do it. I love anything that budget that works. So I'm willing to take the chance on something like this, even if it's crap. I would rather let you guys know that way you don't waste your money. I, however, think it's gonna be just fine. There's so many of these batteries out there floating around and then for any of you guys who are curious here's the listing as the, at the time of recording this it says it's 189 bucks i got it when it was 170 so it's already went up a little bit in price but even then for less than 200 bucks for a 100 amp hour battery that's if it's legit that's good so let's get to it all right guys real quick i was just kind of going through the manual to see if there's anything interesting so this tells you how you can hook it up in series and parallel and it says you can do up to four so that's good and then right here's a nifty little chart that tells you charging current discharge current so for our 12 volt 100 amp hour it says maximum continuous charging currents 50 amp so yeah standard charge currents 20 it will more than likely reduce the lifespan if you decide to fast charge it but that's with most lithium batteries all right so real quick i'm going to show you all the dimensions of this so it's about a foot maybe a foot one inch by six and a half and eight and a half inches tall let's get the weight real quick i'll show you all the weight 21.6 pounds so there's some more specs real quick at the top and if you look right there it says if i can get the glare off max continuous discharge is 100 amps supports three charging methods lipo battery charger solar panels generator wow overall i really like the look and appearance of this so now we're going to go ahead and charge it and get ready for our capacity test Okay, here we go. This is the charger we're gonna use. All right, so here's my charger. It is a six amp charger and it charges to 14.6 volts. So perfect for this lithium iron phosphate battery. And then for those of you who are curious about the charge level that it was shipped with, 13.19 volts. So yeah, I'm gonna go and hook the charger up, let this thing fully charge. And when it is fully charged, we're gonna do a capacity test. I will probably capacity test this at a 0.2C rate. And then once this charger hits 14.6 volts, the light will turn green. So we're gonna know it's fully charged. All right, guys, in order to do the capacity test on this very cheap lithium iron phosphate battery i'm going to use this harbor freight jupiter pure sine wave inverter we're going to put a 0.2 c load on the battery and to measure the current and to measure the capacity we're going to be using this current meter right here these are actually my favorite current meters i'm not sponsored or anything to say this but i like to use these on all my projects they're very easy to set up they have a nice color screen i think they're about 70 bucks on amazon so they're a little expensive but in my opinion these are the best if you're building any sort of battery or power system and you want really good a display and roll over power going in and out it's very easy to set up so i'm going to set this up to monitor that i'm going to wire it all up and i'll show you all when i'm done but it's going to be pretty simple we're just literally going to connect this through a fuse to this to the battery and that's it we'll be able to turn the inverter on put a load on it and actually get a good capacity test of this battery all right guys so here is the setup for testing this battery we got everything connected we got the inverter connected we got the current shunt being externally powered by this resell lipo battery and then we have our current shunt set up right here i preset it to 100 amp hours so it's just going to count down from there and it'll also count how many amp hours we used so that's all set so now i'm going to go ahead and turn the inverter on and make sure it actually powers up we do have a fuse and then there's the current shunt so everything's hooked up so go ahead and turn the inverter on and there we go we are running so now i'm going to connect a about 20 amp width of load which is 0.2 c for this battery and we're just going to let the test run all right so that's what i kind of came up with for a load it's a little less than 0.2 c but this will give us best case scenario for capacity so we're going to let this run until the battery dies and we're going to see what it gives us as far as the load goes i'm running a box fan on low and then running this little 6 amp 12 volt lithium iron phosphate charger to charge the 12 volt power bank so that those two loads 
fields combined are what we're gonna use it for. And yeah, we're just gonna let this run until it shuts off and see what we get for capacity. It should take about four to five hours. All right, guys, we are about halfway through the test. As you can see, we've used about half the battery. So, so far, so good. The voltage is starting to drop a little bit. It was about 13 for a long time. Now it's right below 13. If I get at least, you know, 90, 95 amp hours, I'd probably be pretty happy with it. But we're just gonna let it run until it shuts off and see what the final number is. All righty, guys, I just concluded the discharge test on this cheap Amazon $170 battery. And as you can see, we pulled over 100 amp hours, 101 amp hours, actually. So that's awesome. It didn't even shut off. I actually came over here and shut it off because the voltage was about to get below 11. So the battery is pretty much dead. Lithium iron phosphate has a pretty flat discharge curve. So toward the end, it starts to fall off. But yeah, 101 amp hours. I'm actually really excited about that. I figured it would have done, you know, even if it did 90, to be honest with you, I would have been happy. And some people say that's probably bad, but for how cheap the battery was, I'm really excited that it pulled full capacity. So I'm definitely going to hang on to this thing for the long term. I want to build a couple more projects out of it and keep using it. I am going to cut it open for you guys in this video. So we're going to open this thing, just check the build quality, see what kind of BMS it's running. And yeah, I don't want to destroy it though, because I really do want to run this. The fact that it pulled full capacity, I'm super happy with that. And then I want to do some more long term testing. I want to cycle it a lot more, maybe put it in a cheap 12 volt system that I want to build for you guys on the channel and just see how it does, maybe see how it does pulling a bigger load. But yeah, so far, so good. This thing's awesome. So yeah, let's take it apart and see what's inside of it. All right, guys. So we're back in my little workshop here. So we went ahead and finished the capacity test. As you guys saw, this thing did really good. Now we're going to pop this open and see what's inside and check the build quality out. But luckily on this one, it was just glued at the top and I was able to kind of pry the glue, you know, pry at the seam to get the glue to release. I didn't actually have to cut the battery open because I do plan on trying to keep this and actually use it. So I'm glad I didn't have to totally destroy it, opening it up for you guys. So, oh, it stinks in there. I don't know. People who have reviewed batteries and taken them apart, do they all smell weird? Okay. So, all right. So as you can see, freaking stinks. Oh, all right. So we got the battery opened up. So it looks like it uses two, maybe eight gauge or 10 gauge wires to the main terminals. They have some sort of a coating on them to keep them locked in there. So that looks okay. Yeah. Two conductors in the positive wire. I'm going to go ahead and try to pull this little fiberglass sheet off. All right. There's a good look at the BMS. I don't know what kind of BMS this is, but maybe one of y'all would know. They did put some sort of silicone on all the joints. There's a temperature sensor right here, assuming high, high temperature more than likely. And it looks like it's attached to this bar right here. So I wonder if it just monitors the temperature of that that but i'm gonna try to pull the whole battery out so we can take a better look at the cells all right let's see if we can't get this out i don't want to destroy this like i said previously oh there we go it's coming out so there's just the box nothing crazy there here's the actual battery itself so i'm gonna put this back on like that actually i'm gonna pull this off yeah okay okay so here's a close-up of the cells as you can see they are laser welded so nothing crazy there there is a QR code, but it looks like I'd have to rip whatever this is off to see it. And there's some more, a sticker right there. I'm not really sure what that means. So I can't tell what kind of cells they are, but they look like just blue prismatic cells, maybe like uh, cattle, I believe, or whatever. They're like one of the bigger manufacturers. So I assume there's something like that, just some off the shelf stuff. They do look good though. It's got tape holding the battery together. It's got this fiberglass thing between the BMS and the battery protecting that. All the balance connections look okay there's a temperature sensor right there as well i mean yeah there's really not much more to look at that's about it so this is what the inside of it looks like i'd say the craftsmanship is probably on par with a lot of them maybe a little lower but for what you get i think it's all i think it's okay i think it would function just fine for what you need it for so that's it i'm gonna go slap it all back together there's not really much more i can look at without destroying this thing well, anyways, guys, that's going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this review up. Like I said, the battery performed really well. The capacity test rated really good. Now I need to put it on a heavy load and see how it does on a heavy load, but I'm going to have to do that on another video because I don't have anything put together to do that yet. But what I plan on doing with this is building a small, cheap 12 volt system, and I'm going to show you how to do that to power a window AC in the summertime. So that's going to be kind of the idea with that. I also do have this Wheezy one still. I did a video a few, maybe a year and a half, two years ago. This one I was not able to pull full capacity, but this one's also have some age on it now. So it'll be interesting to see how these both hold up over time but that's gonna do it for now so i think for a 170 if you can get this on sale i do think it's worth it and yeah not much more to say about it i guess that's it and i'll see y'all in the next one let me know what else you guys want to see me do with it